What's up in the legal tech world? Find out in the Lex Factor briefs. Quick hits on the latest happenings in the industry and discussion from your Lex Factor hosts around their potential impacts on business. Feed your brain and empower your firm at the same time. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Lex Factor Briefs. It's your host, Lauren here. And Brad, your co-host. Today, let's talk about outsourcing. So we came across an article, Outsourcing Likely to Grow in Post-COVID Law Firm. And so, you know, we've talked a lot about this, but um, a recent survey that came out actually found that 62% of firms actually expect to make significant changes to their workplace strategy uh, post-COVID and honestly probably later this year moving into 2022. You said 62%? 6-2, yep. I feel like we called this on the previous briefs that this would occur. You know what? They probably listened to us, and that's actually what they wrote this. Yeah. They they probably wrote the article. Making a big time now. That's right. We're making the world happen. Yeah. That's what's happening. No, I can definitely see it, though. I mean, I mean, with everybody working from home, they can see that, you know, it can be done remotely. Next thought process is stepping into the outsourcing world. Um, you know, it, I think it's, we're going to see it just more and more and more. I, I think that's just the beginning because the pandemic is just coming. Well, I'm, I was going to say coming to a close. That's, that's my hope. Uh, fingers but, crossed. But yeah. it's getting better. Yeah, so, you know, is. people are getting vaccinated and, you know, we're going to see this growth. So I think this number is only going to take off from there. I, th- I think it's going to be into the 70 percent here before we know it. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think, you know, 12 months ago, we were all forced into this situation. We literally woke up one day and we're like, what do we do now? and firms, actually all industries, are forced to work from home. Um, You know, God forbid you have everything in the office. If you have paper files, do you have to carry those all to the house? If you're not on a cloud-based software, are you bringing, unhooking your computer from the office, carrying it? Like, who knows? We were all forced into this situation where we had to quickly figure out how the heck we were going to move forward and keep our businesses alive. And so fast forward 12 months later, everybody's doing a pretty good job at it. You know, we figured it out. We figured out what works for us and we are moving forward. Um, I think a lot of firms are actually thriving. You know, we've talked to a lot of our clients who are actually not only doing better than they thought they would be doing, but they're doing better than previous years when it comes to revenue, client growth, things like that. And so I, I think over the past year, everybody's realized, hey, like I can work this way and it's actually doing better for me. Um, I'm bringing in more money. I have have less expenses. Right. Um, I'm able to communicate with my clients on a more personal basis, things like that. And so we were forced into an uncomfortable situation. But at the end of the day, we've all gotten used to it and actually kind of like it. It's it's working well for us. Yeah, I could definitely. There's so many factors that are playing into this. It's just like you mentioned, Lauren. I think all of those, you know, take into account. But also, I think we have to take into consideration that also the job market's opening up. And so with the job market opening up, we have this kind of mix of your firm is growing, the job market's opening up, you may have trouble hiring, you may have people leave for other opportunities, and therefore you need to fill quickly, which then your mind instantly goes to, well, we could outsource this aspect of it, whether it be paralegal, virtual receptionist, whatever it may be, to help sustain the growth at a cheaper rate. And it kind of all plays into the factor. So I think you have to look at all sides of it. But it's definitely something that is going to be continued to take off in the industry. And I, I don't think it's just law industry. I think oh, yeah, it's across no, it's the everywhere. board. It's everywhere. And I think, too, if you're that candidate looking for a job, you know, on the employer side, they're going to be really rich in candidates. There's going to be a lot of people out there looking for jobs. And so it might get be harder to get a job just because there's so many good candidates out there. I think there's also going to be a lot of job openings, like Brad said, um, especially more of, you know, those hybrid roles or virtual roles. And so I think on both sides, there's going to be tons of jobs that are opening up, but there's also going to be tons of competition as well. So you're really going to need to set yourself apart from others. Um, One thing in the article I thought was really, really interesting because it goes across basically everything we've been taught in real life from day one. One, um, some firms are actually taking a quarterly approach to budgeting. So looking at their operating expenses specifically, knowing that things are probably going to change 
probably there's going to be somewhat of a hybrid approach. And so I can't actually imagine working somewhere and not having my full year budgeted out. Thinking you know what I mean? Because there's quarter. that planning. You need to know how much you can spend if you're going over your budget, if you need to, you know, scale things back. So the idea of actually taking a, a quarterly approach to producing your, your firm's budgets is very interesting. Well, there's so many changes that are taking place right now. It's it's like what you said again. Um, places are growing, right? More revenue coming in, but it, it's not what you expected. And it's certainly not the same as year over year. So looking back pre-COVID, you know, if you're growing or if you're not, it's hard to kind of measure it against the same comparison. So I think that's driving the behavior to shorten the budget cycle so you can get a better handle on your finances and make better short-term decisions. But I still think don't lose don't lose focus of the long term. The big picture. Yeah. Don't just, you need to have some sort of goal for the entire year, some sort of. I don't know. Culture's not important. Plan. We can think about that next quarter. <laughs> IT is not important. No, you don't CIOs, need that. Not you until, don't the, need not no, until the second quarter <laughs> should we even think about that. Oh, <laughs> um, no, but I think at the end of the day, you know, if, if you're listening to this today, don't be afraid to, to outsource. Um, it's actually quite common. And actually, once we're able to go back into the office, don't feel like you have to change if you found something that's working for you. So um, the article states, too, currently 90 percent of firms actually do do have third parties delivering some sort sort of portion of their office services and facility works. And actually 81% of firms are doing so for their IT work as well. So those are huge yeah, numbers. Absolutely. A lot of work out there for those IT guys. Yeah. <laughs> cough, cough, Brad. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. But everybody, thanks for tuning in. I think at the end of the day, as the world goes back to normal a little bit, stick with what works for you. You know, don't feel like there's pressure to go either way, you know? Absolutely. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Lex Factor Briefs, and we'll talk to you next time. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in to the Lex Factor. Lexicon takes care of business so you can take care of law. Learn how to build a better practice at lexiconservices.com.